So I've seen a lot of questions or just general confusion on Stack Overflow or Reddit or even in some direct messages that I've received asking a really simple Keras question. And it's not something that I've addressed in any of the previous Keras videos of this Keras playlist. So I wanted to just quickly touch on this question I keep seeing and its corresponding answer in this video. So this mysterious lingering question is, when using Keras Image Data Generator, how can we view the IDs or labels that have been assigned by Keras to the classes of our corresponding images? Okay, admittingly, this is kind of a loaded question without any context around it, but this actually has a very direct answer. But before we jump into that, let's just jog our memory about what we previously did so we can gain some context and see where this question would come into play. If you recall in a previous video, we went through the setup for preparing our cat and dog image data to be used for training a CNN. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then check out the video popping up on your screen now to get caught up. So yeah, in that video, we created these image data generators for our train validation and test sets and called flow from directory on each of these, which we pointed to the location on disk where our train validation and test images reside. So recall that flow from directory just generates batches of our image data to be used for training, validating, and predicting. Now scrolling down, I then just informally brought in this function here called plots that I found online, which allowed us to plot our images with their respective labels in our Jupyter notebook. So here we have these images of cats and dogs from our training set. And since our data is categorical in nature, Keras has assigned our cat and dog classes these one hot encoded vectors as their labels. So here a cat is not referred to as a cat, but rather is referred to as this one hot encoded vector zero one. Likewise, a dog is labeled with its own one hot encoded vector, which is one zero in this case. Since we're really only dealing with two classes here, dog and cat, I very well could have just chosen to use binary classification rather than categorical. If I used binary, then rather than these 2D vectors, each class would instead have a one dimensional label. So rather than this one hot encoded vector of zero one for cat, it instead would just be a label of a zero or of a one. So anyway, we know from visually inspecting this what labels Keras has assigned to each of our categorical classes of cat and dog. But what if we didn't plot this and visually see it? Then how do we know if the label 01 corresponds to cat or if it corresponds to dog instead? And then this begs the question, why do we even care which one it belongs to? To explain this, let's scroll down to where we use our model to predict on data in our test set. So here we previously called model.predictGenerator and passed in our test batches. We then printed out our predictions, and we see in this case all of our predictions were 0, 1. Note this was before we tuned our model to perform better, and here it was performing really poorly and predicting everything as being a cat. So yeah, we have all these 0, 1 predictions here, but if we didn't print our batches ahead of time to understand that Keras assigned the 0, 1 vector to a cat and a 1, 0 vector to a dog, then this prediction wouldn't make much sense to us, right? we wouldn't know if a prediction of 0, 1 was for cat or for dog. So how can we find out without plotting and visually inspecting these assigned labels against their corresponding images, which label belongs to which class? And that's really the kind of question that I'm seeing everywhere on all of these forums and the confusion that's stemming from how to understand which labels for which class. So like I said initially, this is a super straightforward answer, but it's kind of a bit hidden in the Keras docs, so it doesn't necessarily jump right out at us. So there's an attribute called class underscore indices that we can call on our image data generators, which will return the dictionary that contains the mapping from class names to class indices. So let's see what this looks like. We could call this on any of the data generators that we created, so our test, train, or valid batches. We're just going to do it with our test batches here. And when we print this, we see that the value one is assigned to cat, whereas a value of zero is assigned to dog. But wait a minute, so our values are one hot encoded vectors, not just zeros and ones, which is what this looks like here. What's happening here is that it's giving us the index of where the corresponding value of a one resides within our one hot encoded vectors. So it's showing a cat is corresponding to a one. This means that if we look at an image of a cat here, we can see that the value of one within that one hot encoded vector is indeed the first index of that vector. For the dog, we see the value of 1 is in the 0th index in the vector, which is why the class index for a dog is 0. 
Now, if we had another category, say lizard, then we'd have another element down here saying that the class of lizard corresponds to an index of two. And then all of our vectors would actually be of length three for having the three different categorical classes. The dog class would look like this, still with a one in the zeroth index. The cat class would have a one in the first index. And then the lizard class would have a one in the second index. Now just quickly before we end, recall I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this class indices attribute was a bit hidden in the docs. I just wanted to point you to where it is if you want to formally view it yourself. So I'm in the image data generator documentation on Keras site, and if I scroll down to the flow from directory function, and then look at the classes parameter for that function, right at the end of that description of the classes parameter, we see the mention of the class indices attribute. So there you have it. So I hope that this clears up the confusion about how we can access the labels that are assigned to our classes by Keras and why we need that information in the first place. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. Thanks for watching.